their septic tank pops and we get covered in poop. Back in the uh, days I was in high school, I got uh, news and heard about Alex Roy's run across the country in his E39 M5 and of course broke the record and that was such an amazing thing to me. Of course, we've all seen the, the Cannonball Run movie and uh, you know everyone had thought about Cannonball in that way and is a fun film, but it really in this sort of modern age can be so much more and it is actually a run that's still breakable. So that was a light bulb moment for me. Of course, I was still too young at the time and had no car to do it and no license. So I said, one day I'm going to attempt a run like this. And I really, you know, had, had dreamed about it. When Ed set the run in 28 hours, 50 minutes, I had uh, pretty much the worst day ever. <laughs> so I was sitting in my college dorm room. I remember exactly where I was when I saw the news articles laying on my dorm room bed, waking up and I see this guy and he had shattered my dreams. <laughs> and, and this is a run that I believe is, is pretty much unbreakable uh, without anything uh, crazy excessive happening. So, uh, you know, I, I knew my chances of breaking the cannonball were pretty much done. And that's where I had left it for years. I'm a big fan of technology and innovation when it comes to transportation and Electric cars started uh, to come out in, in wild success with Tesla with the Model S in 2012. I didn't think much of it, but I thought pretty cool that there's a different way for someone to travel around. I'm not a save the environment kind of person. I just thought it was interesting that there's a technology that allows you to not burn fossil fuels. I started to uh, research more about Teslas. I remember going on my first test drive one when my father was thinking about one and uh, really encouraged him to get one. He was the first in the family to drive electric. With the advent of electric cars, I think there's an opportunity to break a new record for Cannonball. Of course, Alex Roy has set multiple records with electric, but Tesla had just updated some charging profiles I said, I think we can do this. I was actually sitting on the beach in the Dominican Republic about three weeks before the run when I had decided to set the record. And I'd flown to California uh, the following week to at least time myself into Los Angeles, into the Portofino. I wanted to see what that trip was like in terms of timing myself so I knew not to make any wrong turns, etc. So I have a Tesla Model 3 long range that uh, is the most efficient version of the Tesla cars. It is uh, lowered down slightly so that we can get a little more range for each charge. And then we had the car prepped and it was time to get our co-drivers together, our scouts together and do the run. We picked a date in the end of July, 2019 to do the run and everyone backed out. <laughs> My co-driver had an interview that he could not miss. Our scouts kind of all fell out. And I decided to find my co-driver, Matthew Davis, to come with me. I found Matt uh, years ago through the Mini Cooper community. We were in an event and we've sort of stayed in contact over the years. And I knew he had been wanting to do a cannonball type event. So I texted Matt on Snapchat and I said, hey, how does a cannonball run in an electric car sound? He said, done, where do I show up? Great, I had my co-driver, this was three days before the run. So we meet at my house in Raleigh. We drive up to New York, test all the systems, make sure the car is working okay. We prepared the car really just by putting on the factory aerodynamic wheel options. We lowered it by about two inches or so, so it actually sits quite low, so it's more efficient. From an electronic standpoint, there really wasn't much. We had a CB radio, we had Waze, Escort Max 360C radar detector, and eyeballs looking forward constantly. <laughs> Our methodology for the trip was to travel quickly in between chargers. There's no set cruising speed that we had tried to achieve. Just anything pretty much under 120 miles per hour was a, a good speed for us to not sort of outrun the negative effects of having to charge up faster. After we had the car prepped, we ran to the Red Ball garage, we left with about 90% battery charge, and we ripped it out of New York. Uh, we made it outside of the tunnel in about five or six minutes, very quick. We hit pretty much green lights, but then I made a wrong turn. And we're heading south when we need to head west. So we recover from that relatively quickly, 
its foot to the floor all the way through Pennsylvania until I have to make a move to pass a camper. Now, we are very focused on safety on our run. That was paramount. We did not want to, uh, you know, sort of fly by people and make them angry or put anyone in a dangerous situation. However, there was a camper that was going extremely slow in the left lane, and I make a move ahead of time to go in the right lane. As we're going around a left-hand corner, I'm on the outside lane passing them, which is probably the most dangerous thing we had done on the run. Uh, their septic tank pops and we get covered in poop on the car. <laughs> after we were just covered in crap from this RV, right after we're flying its foot to the floor well over 100 miles per hour, when we notice uh, we're coming up on some cars and we slow down, a Ford Explorer drives over an object and there was no time for us to get out of the way. And we hit the object and uh, I thought it had torn off the front bumper. It looked like a goose that had been roadkill. It was a big bird. And uh, that thing made a big noise. We had a couple little rattles after that and then everything quieted down. We never stopped and we just carried on. We had a really solid run up until about Ohio, which then we started to get in some denser traffic. And that may have been a, a result of leaving potentially at the wrong time for our run, but it was dense traffic and we just put the car on autopilot and had to be patient. Uh, it got really bad as we started to pull into Indianapolis where uh, I don't know if there was tornado warnings, but there was some serious weather coming down on us. It turns out two highways had actually completely shut down and funneled themselves onto ours. We decided to divert and charge the car a little bit longer than we needed to, of course, because we'd be sitting to it in traffic. And we merged back on the highway after our longer charging stop and pretty much just had to put the car in park. We sat uh, in one to five mile per hour traffic for a really long time. It must have been two to three hours of just creeping along. Uh, and, and then as soon as we got out of Indianapolis, the skies were perfect and we put the hammer down and made up time for the rest of the trip. As we were coming into Ohio, our initial estimates were that we were tracking well ahead of the previous run by about nine hours. And uh, the traffic is what really killed our run. By the time we actually got to the end of Indianapolis, we were almost on track for the previous run. That's how much time this, uh, this all took up. As we're driving across the country, we obviously stop and charge. I believe we hit 26 different superchargers and we pulled in pretty much empty and charged to about 50% when the car starts to taper our charge rate. It, it all worked rather well. We had some heat uh, as we started to get out west, but as we're pulling into California, we had an option to stretch our remaining charge to Barstow or divert to a charger in Yermo. Now Yermo, we have to go a little bit north and then we can jump on the highway and head into LA. We decided to drive quickly, go a little bit out of the way and charge up in Yermo. We exit the highway and we see a train coming down the road and we didn't think anything of this. We said, wow, that's pretty cool container train. I start to speed up and it's doing about 80 miles an hour. This train is really moving. We look down at the navigation and it turns out we need to be on the other side of this train. Now, I'm not one to risk anything too crazy. We were not in the position to race a train, and of course, we would not win against a train in an accident. However, I put my foot down to the floor. We're low on battery, which means the car isn't that quick. We make it to our turn. Turn right, of course, there are the little railroad crossing signs with the barriers. Nothing is lit up, but I'm full power over the railroads midair. We launch this thing as the red lights turn on to shut the uh, barriers on the train. And we made it perfectly, uh, no, no risk of safety, but it was a cool moment to be midair when the lights turned on. And of course we made it to the charger with 0% remaining. As we're coming into Los Angeles, we make a lane change, maybe a little close to a car <laughs> that happened to be a lifted Dodge Ram. Now, I'm not sure if we angered the driver or got him excited, but he took off like a stabbed rat. He starts flying in and out of traffic, making moves, and I'm right on his tail. I'm gonna use him as a barrier to get us through Los Angeles to Redondo Beach as quickly as possible. And he led our route into LA 
past some pretty slow moving cars, we made some really good time coming into, uh, into the Portofino. As we exit the highway and come into the Portofino, we get stuck at a lot of traffic lights and we end up finally making it through. As we approach the exit, we knew that we were exactly five hours ahead of the run that at least we knew about. We pull in right to the entrance, slam on the brakes, stop all the systems, and then it was a feeling of relief that we had just broken the record officially. Our moving average for the trip was 76 miles per hour. Overall, 63, and that equates to about seven hours and 48 minutes stopped charging or at traffic lights. We did hit the maximum speed of 140 miles per hour that the car is limited to many times throughout the run. Being able to hold onto this record that I've dreamed about for so long has been really an impactful moment on my life. This is a record that I know is going to be broken soon. It's not something that I'm going to hold on to forever, but it's amazing to be in the fraternity of lunatics finally, and to have these amazing relationships that have come from the cannonball. Going somewhere in a hurry, ma'am? Let me explain your options. Never mind, I got this. The Ticket Clinic.com.